He calls himself Lung Drinker. We just call him Murderer. Tormentor. Fiend. My friends and I, Carly and Ashton, had been walking their dog, Preston, when Lung Drinker stumbled out in front of us. It was about six in the evening, and the sun and the moon had begun to switch shifts for the night. We were all on our return to their house, where I was going to spend the night to play video games and MTG, and if I were lucky, Lung Drinker crossed our path, initially not heeding us. Had it just been us, without Preston, I'm sure the terror of the night would have been avoided. But Preston saw the danger, and he started immediately barking. Lung Drinker, in the shape of a naked old man with sagging skin, stopped in place. A head draped with gray and unwashed hair twitched and then turned, casting its gaze toward us. Carly, the oldest of us and yet the most easily frightened, shrieked at the sight while Ashton just swore. I said nothing, too surprised to even utter some expletive or emotional outburst. Preston barked again and... Lung Drinker, in a shape unbefitting of his physical capabilities, sprinted towards us. Carly, useless, stood petrified, but Ashton went forward to challenge the approaching man who was not a man. Lung Drinker swatted Ashton aside, sending him crashing into and cratering upon impact a massive tree nearby. In the next second, Lung Drinker was right in front of Carly and I, but rather than slay either of us, he grabbed Preston and held him in the air. Preston barked, then yipped, then squealed as Lung Drinker compressed the dog's body in his hand until it resembled a fur-covered dumbbell. You could hear the air exit the poor dog's body, a terrible wheezing accompanying the deflation. Lung Drinker breathed in the escaping air and whatever other essence of life exists within canine companions. Once done, he tossed the dead dog aside. Lung Drinker's body changed then. The skin grew taut, muscles emerged or finally became visible, and his eyes, which had been nothing but black pits before, took on the missing whiteness. The hair kept its length, but darkened. The white dyed to thick sable strands. He resembled some powerful, long-haired, uh, proto-human. Carly's screams, which were horrible during Preston's death, escalated at the sight of this morphing and became essentially white noise. I shook myself out of immobility and, uh, thinking of nothing better to do, swung with all my strength at the fiend that who was so absorbed in finishing his transformation that he looked totally unaware of our presences. I, I was, of course, wrong. And my fist was caught effortlessly in his hand. He crushed my fist instantly then delivered a debilitating strike to my ribs. I fell, and before I could think to clutch my crushed hand or cracked ribs, another blow sent me to the ground. I hadn't felt that one, but I did see his leg withdrawing and felt a warm trickle of blood fall down my face from the side of my head. My vision briefly lapsed, a full second of black interjecting the stream of sight. The true agony of that kick would be felt in its full intensity later during my recovery. From my side lane position on the ground, I viewed the next events from a lopsided perspective. I saw Lung Drinker approach the still screaming Carly and seize her by the throat with both hands. He lifted her a few feet from the ground so that her chest was level with his mouth, tore away the layers of flesh and bone and began sucking the air from her lungs. He again siphoned whatever greater essence exists within the bodies of normal, terrestrial creatures. Carly's flesh sagged and sank inward as he fed, and her screams ceased, replaced by a soundless gasping. Her anguished eyes met mine, pled with me to help her. I could do nothing but lie there as the life left her eyes. He tossed the skin aside and turned back to me. I was still on the ground and in absolutely no position to put up a fight. As he walked, his body transformed again, although this time the change was much more monstrous. His skin hardened, darkened, 
and the muscles expanded to inhuman proportions. His hair fell out, and antler-like protrusions broke through the flesh of his scalp, forked and twisted like the branches of a time-warped tree. The whites of his eyes turned red, and his face split at the center to reveal a hideous gash in which worms or some other hellish pest writhed about. His fingers on each hand merged so as to form three horrific talons, and all about him radiated a heat, as if emitted by some internalized fire. I laughed, howled nonsensically and stupidly because I was about to be murdered by some alien we happened upon while walking through the woods. The fiend stopped just before my broken and battered body, and then knelt down. The heat charred my clothing and singed my arm, and flash dried the tears that had fallen from my eyes. The fiend studied me for a while, smirking at my mounting discomfort, and then stood again. I have been fed all that I require, and need not the air in your lungs, nor the spirit of your body. You will be spared, assuming you recover from your wounds. If you wish to seek me out in your tongue, I am known as Lung Drinker. Now that you have seen me as I truly am, you need only utter my name, and I will come to relieve you of your breath. His horrible, not right and worm-infested smile sparked a heat in my chest, but for all my rage I could not even stand. Undeniably beaten, I watched as that thing walked away into the orange-tinted woods, leaving me barely alive and my friend and her dog dead. As for Ashton, I had thought he'd been killed as well, but a weak and hoarse voice called out to me before I fainted. I returned the call and asked about his condition. Turning my head was not something I could manage, so I had to mentally assess his wounds from my ground lane position. He told me he thought a few of his ribs were broken, and maybe his collarbone and that there was blood everywhere. I felt like so much crap, but he sounded worse. I asked if he could reach his phone, and he responded that it had been broken when he collided with the tree. I calmed him down, and in an agony so intense as to be impossible to put into words, withdrew my phone from my pocket and dialed 911. I tried to remain conscious until we were at least in an ambulance but the sound of the approaching sirens was apparently enough assurance of salvation for my battered brain. Days later, after being treated, bandaged, medicated, and exhaustively questioned by detectives as to the nature of our friend's killing, we told them some crazed drug addicts had committed the atrocities. Ashton and I had both lost our resolve to invoke and challenge Lung Drinker. We were weak mortals who even when at our physical best, posed no threat to the infernal creature. Ashton suffered the most, afterward torn between his desire for revenge and his understandable fear at facing the horror again. He healed faster than I did, was up and walking without assistance only a few days after the attack, whereas I can barely stand without collapsing from the pain that my medication fails to mitigate. We live together now, and at pretty much any time of day, his lamentations can be heard. He and Carly weren't just siblings. They were best friends. If while walking you come across a sickly old man, or someone who just seems out of place for the environment, turn away. Even if you feel like you can handle yourself. I was spared, only because it was full, after drinking the air and spirit of my friend and her dog. I loved her, but neither myself nor her brother could protect her from that hell-spawned thing. So please, if you come across Lung Drinker, run as fast as you can. Don't try to fight it. Don't let it drink you. <laughs>